All right, just barely made it here. All right, everyone, we're about to get started here. All right, it's 1 p.m. All right, welcome to Cal 2, right? You're in the right place? So my name's Robert DiGiovanni. All right, I've been sitting in my office since 10 a.m. with nothing, well, I was doing stuff, but I was like gonna be on time, and then I got a call at the last second, so I'm like running around with my head cut off here. Normally, I'll, I'll be a little early for class, but. Um, all right, so are you all familiar with Canvas? Anyone never been here? You all okay getting here? All right, this is the website for our class, and uh, I expect that you can get there, and that you know where the inbox is. What the heck? All right, where you know you know where the inbox is, right there. Okay, so if I'm going to communicate with you, it'll be there. And if you need to communicate with me, it needs to be through there. So don't send me emails through your personal, you know, email, Gmail, Yahoo, all that. Go through here, please, okay? Otherwise, it, it usually gets filtered out, and I never, I never see it, so, all right? Um, now, I'm going to switch to the student view of this. I am not going to spend the entire day here going through the syllabus and having a meet and greet and sharing summer stories, all right? We're going to get down to doing some math, all right? But let me just run through the highlights of, of the course. So if you're not familiar with my teaching style, I know I have a couple of former students in here. Um, I'll bring the camera to class every day. I'll record all the lectures. I'll post them on YouTube, all right? They'll be posted later today. You can go back and watch them. You know, take your time in class to pay more attention to the concepts as opposed to writing it all down and being like, I'll figure all this shit out later. You know, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, try and pay attention to what's happening as opposed to, I better not miss that negative sign. Because you can always go back and watch it. Also, you know, if you ever miss class, you know that feeling when you come back and you're like, oh my gosh, is this the same class? You know, like you walk into a different world. At least you can go back and take a look at the video. If there's any uh, quizzes or homeworks or something like that, it's usually going to be on the video. So... You know, look at that first before you, you contact me like, hey, what did I miss? Because I'll just say, hey, go watch the video, right? All right, so the link to the lecture videos is right here. That'll take you to my YouTube channel, a certain playlist that has uh, your videos. Oops, that's my fault. Shut up. I've heard worse. <laughs> Okay, so that's the loudest ringer that I could find on my phone. I need it to be loud so I can hear it across the house. Um, okay, so here's the link to the videos for the um, lectures. Now, you come to class, we go over the material, right? You go home, now it's your job to actually go and practice so you do homework, right? The problems are, are on a schedule, which is right here, and you can download that, print that off, and it has next to, well, let's look at it. It has next to each date um, what to do or what you're supposed to do for that section. So let's see here. All right, it's kind of hard to read this, but I'll just zoom in. Um, so today we're going to cover inverse trigonometric functions, and this, this is the homework for that section, page 181. Here are the problems. You'll see it looks like some things are skipped. Oh, yeah, if it looks like things are skipped, they're not really. Like, this is two sections, so there's one homework assignment for those two sections. Um, so the idea is that as soon as we finish covering a topic, right, the class that we finish that topic, the next class, you are 
expected to have not mastered, but have a pretty good grip on the material. So that means that homework assignment should be completed by the time we come back here on Thursday. All right? Any questions on the calendar? Shows when the exams are scheduled for. And we have, what, three exams? Oh, this one's not in bold, but three exams, and then we have a final exam. All right? Notice there's no review days. That's because we just don't have time in this class to, to spend a whole day talking about what's going to be on the test. Now, I will discuss the test, but it won't be, it won't be like me handing you like a practice test. It's going to be more like, here are the topics, do your homework. In this class, I've given tests that are just homework problems, and it's still tough, you know, because it's hard. So, all right, that's the schedule. You can print that out. Now, while you're doing your homework, while you're doing your homework, if you run into any issues, I have another playlist, video playlist, that I spent many, many, many hours standing in front of a whiteboard by myself doing all the homework problems. So you can go and just watch me work through the homework. Now, I know some of you I had for pre-cal and I didn't have this complete, I don't think I had it completely done yet or something. It's done, the Cal 2 has been done for a couple of years. So that's, uh, that's a great reference for you. But there's a wrong way to use these videos, all right? The wrong way is that you sit there and instead of doing the homework, you just watch me do the homework and sit there and go, yeah, I could do that. Yeah, I got that. I understand that. And that's, that's very dangerous because, of course, I, I, I know the road to go down, right? And that's the trouble when you're sitting there taking a test is you have the problem and do you know the road to go, go down, you know? So if no one's guiding you, can you do it? So the, way, the proper way to use the videos, in my opinion, is to start the homework assignment, you know, have the video up, and then start working the first problem. And then after you get a little bit into it, you know, maybe play the video and see if we're even doing the same math, you know, like if we're on the same page. And then, you know, or you can just check it at the end, or, or you do the homework, check your answer, and if it's not good, come watch the video. However you want. Just don't, don't sit there and just watch me and, sit and think that you know what's going on. Yeah? Good? Okay. All right. Let's get back to Canvas. So th that's the way the course works. I come in here. I talk for an hour, 40 minutes. We do problems. And then I send you home to do homework. And you watch videos if you need to. And come back and just keep over and over and over. It's going to be a long journey. Are you all ready? Y'all are going to go on a journey. Calculus 2 is a journey. Probably like no journey you've been on in math. It is a lot of material. So it's fun, but it's hard. Have y'all heard it's hard? Yeah. Y'all heard it's harder than Cal 3? That's true. <laughs> don't, yeah, don't, don't let anyone lie to you about it. Okay, because I've heard that some of the tutors in tutoring lab are telling people that the Cal 3 is, is, um, is harder, that Cal 2 is easier than Cal 3, and just don't, don't believe that. Don't believe it. All right. Uh, the syllabus. Man, this didn't come out very good. This, this little thing, this little highlight, like a little quote that I like. It says, don't practice until you get it right. Practice until you can't get it wrong. I saw that in a gymnasium. I don't know. But... Uh, <laughs> I mean, I think it applies very, very much with math, right? You don't want to walk into the test with that feeling like, you know what, I did, I did a homework problem on, on, on um, integration by parts, and I got it right, and I feel good. You, you, you want to walk in and be like, whatever integration by parts problem he gives me, I'm going to get it right. You know? Like, you're not intimidated by the subject anymore. You've mastered it. All right. Um, the syllabus. All right. You can all read, so I'll go real quick. All this stuff in the beginning, I didn't put there and I can't take out, so we're just going to skip that. Meeting times, we know when we're supposed to meet. I already told you my name. My office location is right here, JH1110, which is the first floor of this building. You have to actually go into room A, and then you can find room O. It's kind of a hidden, like, dungeon. Right? And you also have to go outside the building, down the elevator or um, stairs to get back in. There's no staircase that takes you from the third floor to the first floor. You have to go out, down, back in. 
The engineers said that they did it on purpose, but I think they overlooked it. All right, now I also offer you my cell phone number. And I don't do this because I really like my students. I do this, why is that not working? Okay, I do this because I offer, I offer these classes online also. So I, I offer my internet students my cell phone number so they can get in touch with me. So I may as well just do it for everyone. So what I ask is that if you're gonna contact me th through my cell phone, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you know, I don't close, all right? Now I go to sleep and then I just won't answer. But don't ever feel afraid that you're gonna bother me at, at midnight, because my phone will be silent and won't, it won't be an issue. So if you do uh, call me, call me fine, but if you text me, make sure on that first text you give me your name and what class you're in. And I'm teaching two Cal 2s face to face, so just you know, say Tuesday, Thursday, so I know that you're in this class. And then what I recommend you do is you, you're probably having trouble with a problem, right? You've already watched my video and you're still struggling, you can't figure out something's going wrong with your math. So you take a picture of the problem with your phone, you take a picture of your work with the phone, and then you send both those pictures to me. And then on my phone, I can write on it, so I'll just look at your picture and find your mistake and circle it or do whatever I need to do and I'll send you a picture back. And that works real well, all right? Um, I just ask that if you do send me a text, think through everything first. Send one text as opposed to 10 texts with your, your like running thoughts. You know what I'm saying? Like, have you ever got those texts from people before? It's like, just bang, 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 and they say like, like 10 words, right? One word, one word, it's like, okay, so just please keep in mind that I have a lot of students, so one text would be great. All right, office hours. So I'm available to you in my office for help. My best students, the ones that do the best historically in this class, are students that I have gotten to know. They come to my office, I see what they can do. Take advantage of the office hours. Even if you just want to go in there, sit at the table outside my desk, and do the homework, and then just be able to talk to me, that, that's fine. This is when I'll be in my office. So today, this is the only class I have today. So I'm, I'm there from 10.30 till 1. So right before this class, I'm there for what? Hour and a half, right? So I can be there earlier. I'm, I'm most likely going to be in my office like by 9, but officially it's 10.30 to 1. All right? Now on Monday, Wednesday, I'm also in my office, so come on by. Friday, make an appointment. Does everybody have this book? That was the book we used for Cal 1, 2, and 3. Okay, you need that soon. If, if you don't have it, um, talk to me. We can take a picture of my book so you can have the homework problems at least to get you through the next few days. As far as the calculators, I do have a policy on calculators. On the tests, you cannot use a um, computer algebra system calculator. That's TI-89, that's a TI Inspire CAS. Now, if you just went out and spent 160 bucks on a calculator, and now I'm telling you you can't use it, just talk to me and we'll, we'll find a workaround. I have some spares I can loan you for the semester. Uh, the problem with those is that they do a lot of calculus. So I, I, I don't, the only thing you need to do on your uh, calculator is just like arithmetic. You don't ever need to be doing any sort of calculus with the calculator, all right? Description of the course, you can read, you can read. We have a lot to cover and we will cover it all, all right? So I, not going to shortchange you, okay? I'm, I'm going to cover all of this material. Now, I will admit that towards the end, when we get to polar coordinates, and um, this section, this last one, topic eight, it'll be very, very light, um, but you will at least have some exposure to it. Uh, grades, that's what you're probably most interested in. Standard grading scale. We have quizzes, which quizzes can come at any point in time. I can give you, everybody gets a quiz, like take, take everything off your desk, let's go. I could give you group quizzes, I could give you take home quizzes, I could give you, you know, um, you showed up today, you get 100. You know, I mean, it doesn't matter, I, can, I get to make up what a quiz is. Just your job is to be prepared from the material from the prior class, all right? Sometimes I will give a quiz on what we just talked about, but most of the time those will be group quizzes. All right, that's something that, okay, we just did this, let's see how you do with, as a group. All right, course policies, attendance, you need to be here. Even though I'm recording all this, you need to be here. Um, 
you get four absences after that, bad things happen. Now, I do have an electronic device policy. Okay, that's fine. I'm just showing, I, I, you're the one with the phone out, so I thought that would be a great, okay? So my electronic device policy is that, yes, I provide you all the notes for the class already on, online in Canvas. I'll show you where, uh, where those are. So you can use a laptop um, if you want to follow along with what I'm doing. But if I get that sense that you're actually over there like playing Fortnite or something, or if you're on your phone doing something that you're not, you know, like that's not related to calculus, then there's a 10% 10, 10 penalty on your next exam. You're asked to leave and you're counted absent. So it's a very harsh policy and I do not hesitate to make an example out of people. I always have to make that, you know, I have to come across as being very strict. And so I, I hope nobody is going to do that. Anyone want to volunteer to be the first one? No. Okay, so it, now if you have something going on, you know, that's important on your phone, I just ask that you take it out of the classroom. Okay, that's all. I just don't want it happening in here. Now that doesn't mean, you know, you're going back and forth 15 times during class, right? But if it's something you need to take care of, just take it out of the room. And that goes for me too. You know, sometimes I'll get, I'll be expecting a call and, and no, most of the time I'll let you know. And then what I'll do is I'll say, hey, got the call, got to go. And I'll just step out real quick. All right, behavior, I never really have had problems with behavior, but uh, I have it in my, my syllabus. If you're just driving everybody in this class crazy, then I'll have a talk with you and I'll take off 10 points and, you know, same thing. That's it. That's the calendar. We already, we already talked about the calendar, but I have to have it in my syllabus. Any questions? All right, files. There is the schedule, okay? Now, I am going to be going through, and as I go through all the material, I'll be, I'll be using a program called Mathematica, which has all these like animations and things like that. Well, not in this class, not too much, but um, I have PDF copies of those, and, and that's what's here. So if you wanted to, you could print those out and just follow along. It's up to you. You don't have to. It's not required. But those are the uh, notes. Not every section in the book has notes, and that's because some sections I just like to start from scratch each time and just create a set of notes for you that way. Questions on files? There was one more thing there. Oh, formula sheets. Formula sheets. See these four sets of sheets here? This first one I think is like the first four or five pages out of the back of the book, the formulas. You're allowed to print that out bring that to every exam. You can print all of these out and bring them to every exam. Now you won't need them all for every exam, especially like this one, you won't need that till exam three. But just go ahead and go home, print these out, keep them in a binder or something, and at the test bring those. You are not allowed to edit any of those formula sheets. You can't add your favorite formula. You can't bring your unit circle from pre-cal that you know, you've, you've come to love. Everybody's gonna have the same resources. All right, so you just make sure you understand what's on these sheets. That way when you go to actually take the test, you're not like, well, where's that formula, right? So questions on the formulas? Y'all are so quiet, what's up? What, it's one o'clock, it's lunchtime, I guess. Y'all just ate lunch and you're tired. Discussions, if y'all wanna talk to one another, here you go. And then people, that's another way to communicate with one another. All right, go back to the home page here. Just make sure I'm not forgetting anything. Oh, okay, so you have an assignment due, and it's due, uh, I think, right before class on Thursday. So sometime between now and, and when class starts on Thursday, you need to click on this, and let's see if it comes up. Sometimes, oh yeah, see, that's what that student was telling me. So you take this quiz, I don't know if it's gonna let me. Yep, okay, I need to edit this. Okay, I've read the syllabus, watched the orientation video. I don't have an orientation video for you all. Okay, so scratch that. I understand the requirements of, of the course. It's basically, you know, how you go and you go to a website and at the bottom it says like, check here before you confirm and you never read it. That's pretty much what I'm asking you to do here. All right, I confirm the above. I have no clue what's happening. So, you know, you just tell me. 
Okay, I need that done by the time we meet again, all right? And that way, if you do take out your phone and I take off 10 points and you're all upset about it, you go to the chair of the department, ah, it's not fair, I pay to come to this class. I should be able to use my phone, right? Then I'll be like, you understood, right? You understood? So I need this from you, quickly. I guess you can use your phone now if you want, since y'all haven't confirmed now. Uh, yes, I'm kidding. Yeah, if you say no, then I'm going to have to talk to you about continuing in the class. Yeah, whether or not I will allow you to stay. Because those are my rules, and if you don't want to follow them, then the option is to leave. And I'll help you get into another class. That's no problem. You know, I'm, I'm here to help. <laughs> All right. I don't think there's any more administrative stuff that I want to talk about. Is there any questions? Y'all excited? Yeah, Cal 2 is exciting. <coughs> let, me, uh, let me bring up, let's get a blank document here. I want to talk about calculus before we get do anything official. I mean, I guess this is official. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about Calculus 1, and then we'll talk about Calculus 2. Let's just call it Cal 1. How about that? All right, tell me, what's Cal 1 about? Derivatives. So if you had to sum it up in one word, you'd say derivatives? I guess we could also say differentiation, right? What, if you were to try and explain to someone one of the fundamental concepts geometrically, what would your explanation of Cal 1 be? Picture-wise, if I had to draw a picture of what Cal 1 was about, could you, could you do it? Tangent line? I like that. So the idea basically was that if you have some function, right, some curve, you say call that f, all right, that in Cal 1 what we learned is we could go to like some arbitrary point on that graph and we could find the slope of that line. And the slope of that line, which we call the tangent line, would actually be the derivative evaluated at that point A, whatever that A is, right? So it's finding, geometrically, it's finding the slope of a tangent line. And then we use that to do lots of different things. Uh, what else in Cal 1 did you do? That's it, you just took derivatives and looked at lines, slope, tangent lines the whole time? Related rates. Related rates. My first class, my class on Monday, Wednesday, Nobody said that. I think they had all like flushed it from their memory as like a nightmare. <laughs> related rates. All right, related rates is usually in the top two most hated topics in Cal 1 because they're word problems. All right, so related rates. Um, what's an example of that? A spherical balloon is being inflated at so many cubic blah, blah, blah. How fast is the radius? That, those, right? Okay. All right, what else? Oh, okay. All right, I really need to see a true show of hands here because not every Cal 1 instructor at this school covers that. How many of you saw L'Hopital's rule? Well, maybe everybody covers it now. It wasn't always like that. Who, you know? Doesn't look familiar? Did you take it here? Okay. Talk to me after class, because we'll need it later, and since so many people said they've seen it, I won't take much time on it, but you and I could sit down for 10 minutes, and I could probably just real quick show it to you, all right? Okay, L'Hopital's rule, that's an awesome rule, right? Makes life with limits a lot, easy, a lot easier. Oh yeah, limits. If, if you look at the subject calculus, like if this is the subject of calculus, right here, all Cal 1, 2, 3, everything, sitting here, the heart of calculus is the limit, all right? Everything is coming in from the limit. Everything, differentiation comes from the limit. Everything we do here is limits. All right, what else? Optimization. Optimization. 
that's um, farmer wants to build a pen. He has 200 feet of fence. You know, what are the dimensions of the pens to maximize area? Those types of things. Okay. Anything else? What's that? Okay, so towards the end of class, you start talking about antiderivatives, right? Okay. I'm going to not put it there because, well, just stay tuned. Okay. Anything else? Mean value theorems in there. It's a quick topic, though, right? It's a quick one, but it's in there. Um, how about curve sketching? Curve sketching? All right, so curve sketching um, is a big topic. And we, hopefully you saw that from curve sketching, it brings a lot of concepts from Cal 1 together, and the problems can be very, very long. And it's especially frustrating when you know you can just go like to Wolfram Alpha, type it in, and it draws the graph, right? But it, it's, it's really, like I said, it just kind of encompasses a lot of the topics. And it makes you have to be good at solving equations and understanding number lines and intervals and everything. So, all right, I think that's all for Cal. I mean, there's more in there. But for Cal 1, that's generally what, what we were doing, right? Everything pretty much had to do with the, the derivative. And then we come to Cal 2. So what's Cal 2 going to be about? And, and of course, I can't cover everything exactly because you haven't seen it. We need to talk about it. But I can kind of give you a summary of what Cal 2 is going to be about. Um, you mentioned antiderivatives, right? Well, the reason we cover it in Cal 1 is because that gives you a little bit of an overlap into Cal 2. But Cal 2 is all about antiderivatives in what we call not, not differentiation, we call it integration. And we are going to spend one third, about one third of the class, just learning how to find antiderivatives. So do you remember when we took derivatives that we started out with the limit definition and that really sucked, the algebra sucked in there? And then we say, hey, we got these rules, the power rule, right? x to the n, the derivative, blah, blah, blah. And then we said, OK, after the power rule, uh, before chain rule, product rule. So we have power rule, product rule, quotient rule, and then the almighty chain rule, right? And then other than those ru rules, things like derivative of sine x, you would just kind of like we're told what it is, right? So we have basically in Cal 1, power, product, quotient, chain. And I, I would argue that you could teach somebody how to do that because it's with relative ease because it's very mechanical, right? Like the, the power rule, like bring the n down, subtract 1, right? Product rule, derivative of this one times that plus. So these are like formulas, aren't they? Unfortunately with antiderivatives going backwards, trying to undo differentiation is very difficult. It is not, I can't provide you just formulas. Just doesn't work like that. So what we have are techniques that we attempt to try and employ. And it's very hard to um, teach instinct. And that's, you know, students that, that really get good at this have an instinct for it, but the instinct I'm here to tell you is not just something you were born with, all right? It, it is all re uh, related to how good you are with derivatives. Like if you really never got the chain rule down, then antiderivatives is going to just tear you apart. And I'm not trying to intimidate you or, or like make you scared, but I'm just being very honest with you. If, product, if, if I ask you to do a product rule right now and you're like, what was the product rule? Wait a minute, what? You know, like if you're still there, like going backwards is going to, I mean, well, it's like anything else, right? Try, could you run forward? Yes, can you run backwards? Would you want to run backwards? I mean, it's dangerous, right? So, it's gonna be a challenge, all right? And we're gonna, we're gonna spend the first third of the course just be, you know, learning the techniques go backwards. Then, once we do that, 
we're going to figure out that there is, there is a geometric interpretation of this. Like the antiderivative actually does provide us something. And it's not the slope of the tangent line. It's actually, you take a curve like this and you cut it at two endpoints, like from here to here. And somehow the antiderivative will be able to give us the area underneath this curve, all right? Which, which is pretty nice, all right? That it's, we're, we can find the area underneath the curve. And then what we do is we start to go crazy with this idea. So we say, okay, imagine taking this area, this whole picture, take it off the page, and just kind of swing the function around the x-axis three-dimensionally. And you'd create this like solid shape. Would you agree it would kind of look like that, like three-dimensionally? Do you all see the x-axis coming out the middle there? Okay, and so the question is, can you tell me the volume of this object? And yes, we can. We can find the volume of this. So we'll do that. And then we'll ask the question, all right, well, um, what's the surface area of this? Can we figure that out? Turns out we can. Um, and then we ask a different question. We say, all right, take this curve again. Take it off the page, just the curve. Take it off the page. Imagine it's a string and, and straighten it out, like tighten it, right? And lay it out here. How long is it? How long is that? That's called arc length. So it's like if you were going to walk down this path, how long is that path, right? It's, it's not the distance from this point to this point, right? It's something else. So we, we can actually calculate that. But to do all these, the area, the volume, the surface area, the arc length, to do all those, we need to be able to take antiderivatives. So this will be the middle third of the course. And I'm going to actually say, it's actually less than, I mean, it's not quite a third, but that's what we'll do. So we learn how to integrate, then we do some applications. We'll, we'll throw in some physics applications in there, like work, maybe hydrostatic pressure or something like that. And then we move on to the last third of the course. Anybody know what the last third of the course is? Series. series. What have you heard about series? They're fun, right? That's what you've heard? Yeah. Series are tough. All right, series are tough. Now, they're, they're amazing, but they're tough. And the reason most of them are tough is, or bec uh, that they're tough is because most of you have absolutely zero experience with series. Like, you have never done series in the past, and you've never messed with them. There's a ton of notation you have to learn. And then on top of that, on top of that, the way you actually do the problems is not mechanical. It's not, uh, it's like, step A, B, C, D. It's all these tests that you have to do. You have to do a lot of logic and you have to write down your ideas to try and prove to me that you know what you're... Because the question, some of the questions we're going to be asking are going to be like true or false. It's like yes or no. But you have to justify why it's yes or no. You can't just flip the coin and no and then hope for the best. Like you have to actually defend your position and that, that requires you ha having to think about how you think and how you write things down. Is everything right? Everyone's looking at the camera. Is everything okay? You all right? Everyone just keeps on looking up at the camera now. All right. So series. Um, can I give you an example of that? Sure, I can give you an example of a series. I'll give you a couple of, a couple of examples just to kind of pique your curiosity here. All right. So how about this? Um, what, if I, what if I told you to, to add this up? One plus, you don't, don't get your calculator out, okay? One plus a half plus a third plus a fourth. You'd get a number, wouldn't you? Right? T -t Type those all into your calculator, hit enter, you'd have an answer. Do you see the pattern? What would the next one be if I wanted to go one more? One fifth? What if I asked you to add these up forever? Right? If you could, right? What would happen? Would your number just keep getting bigger and bigger and become infinite? Another way you can look at this is, Let's say we have this bucket, all right? I don't care how much it holds, but let's say it holds, let's say it holds a thousand gallons or something. So we pour one gallon in, and then we pour half a gallon in, and then a third of a gallon, and then a fourth of a gallon, and a fifth, and we keep doing this forever. Will the bucket overfill? What do you think? It turns out sometimes. In this particular one, it will overfill. Okay, it will. But if we do this one,
and do the same thing, it will not overfill. And that becomes very counterintuitive because, you know, this is a finite number, right? And it's positive. This is a positive number, positive number, positive number. So if you keep on piling positive on top of positive forever, it seems very logical that it would overfill eventually. All of these are positive numbers, right? And if you keep throwing them in there forever, it seems like it would overfill, but it doesn't. This one does not. This one does. So when it does, when it goes and does not, I should say, when it does not overfill the tank, we call that convergence. And when it does overfill the tank, we call that divergence. So we'll be looking at these things, you know, we'll be looking at these things called series, and then we'll be asking ourselves, does it converge or diverge? So there's a lot of investigation we have to do into this to figure it out. And then that all leads us to the kind of grand finale with series, and that is this. Somebody give me a function that you used either in pre-cal and college algebra that's not like one of the like polynomials, like one of the weird ones, one of the weird functions. One over, that's kind of a polynomial. Give me something weirder than that. It may be weird. So. How about e to the x? I don't know if, it, if everyone truly understands what e to the x is, right? It's an exponential function, e to the x, right? So when we go and we say like, all right, what's e squared? Nobody here is going to be able to tell me what e squared is without popping their calculator out, right? However, when you type in e squared on your calculator, what is your calculator actually computing? Like it, does it know what e is? Does it know, like what is it doing? Because your calculator can really only do four operations. It can do addition, subtraction. It can do multiplication, division. It can raise things to powers, but that's multiplication. That's repeated multiplication. So you only have four operations in a calculator. So when you type in e squared, like what's the actual like mechanics of what's going on. Where are my computer science majors? Really? Wow, okay, well. So inside, inside the computer in the algorithm, it is actually computing Okay, do y'all see a pattern there? You have like no x's, right? It's just one and then x, then x squared, x cubed, x to the fourth. Do y'all see that? Now the denominators are a little weird. It goes like 1, then 2, then 6, then 24. Those are kind of weird. It's kind of harder to see the pattern there. But there is a pattern. We can, we'll talk about that later. And this actually goes on forever, okay? So right now, if I wanted to know what e squared was and I wanted to approximate it, what I would do is plug 2 in here for x. Uh, you see what I did? Yes? Okay. So if you did this, type this into your calculator right now, you would actually get an approximation of e squared. And if you wanted to go out further, you would get a better approximation. So it turns out that e to the x, this function, is just a series of powers of x. Do you see that? It's just a series of powers of x. It turns out that all functions that you've ever studied in your life, all of them, natural log, 1 over x, quadratics, everything, sine, cosine, tangent, every one of them, can be approximated with some power series, a series of powers of x. And so those, those series are actually, they have technical names, they're called Maclaurin series and Taylor series. And that's what we'll study. So we'll, and, and what's nice about it, what's, what's really awesome about it, is this. What's the derivative of e to the x? e to the x, right? Check this out. If, I, if you believe me that this is this, what's the derivative of this? Let's see. What's derivative of 1? Okay, what's derivative of x? 1. So if I took the derivative of this, so that was 0, right? And then you said what? 1 plus... Now here, what would happen? The two would come out, cancel. So you just have what? X plus, now look at this one. The three comes out, it cancels, you get what? Three over six is one half. So you get X squared over two. And then what about this next one? Four, you get what? X cubed over 
6. And isn't that the same thing? That's the same function. E is its own derivative. And you can see it very clearly. So it's e if you have a very complicated, nasty function that you just cannot take the derivative of, if you can somehow convert it to its power series, the derivative becomes very easy because it's just power rule. That's it. These are all just power rule. It's easy to do, right? And as we'll see when we're trying to integrate and go backwards, it can be very difficult to integrate things. So if we can convert them to their power series, we can integrate easily, find antiderivatives easily, same way. So very, very powerful, very good stuff, very difficult stuff. And it's at the end of the semester, you're tired, you're, you know, we cram it in, so. All right, I've used 40 minutes, I'm done. I have to stop talking. Any questions? We're not gonna talk about Cal 3. If you wanna take Cal 3, it's basically Cal 2 and Cal 1 in three-dimensional space, so. All right. Y'all excited now? No? Cal 2 is my favorite class to teach because it truly is a journey. And I, you know, have done this class so many times, but I enjoy it every single time because I get to watch you. I get to watch you start to really kind of come to grips with your own limitations and to start to, like you used to think that your bar was here, you know, you used to think, well, this is like the peak of what I could do. Like you can start to like raise the bar for yourself in a class like this. All right, so I have something for you. I have a quiz. So what this is, look at this as a day one assessment. What I wanna do is I wanna see where you are. All right? So what I did is I came up with a, a problem set. There's 10 problems, front and back. Every single one of them, I'm asking you to take a derivative. All right? You're going to work by yourselves right now. You have 10 minutes. That's it, 10 minutes. I do not expect anyone to finish this. Someone in my Monday, Wednesday class got close, but nobody completely finished it. So don't worry about that, all right? I'd rather you do four problems right than to scramble through all 10 and have them all wrong, all right? No formula sheets, no calculators, just you and what you have in here right now at this time, all right? <clears throat> everybody, have a, uh, everybody have a pencil. I recommend you don't write in pen. I don't, I don't like people who write in pen. Am I allowed to say that? I guess I can say that. Unless you, unless you are not going to make any mistakes, don't write in pen. All right, do not start. Just leave them right here at the edge of the desk, and I'll, so I don't want anyone to have an unfair advantage in terms of time. I don't have an extra pencil. Hold on. Keep it here. No looking at it. Uh, you can ask someone. I'm sure somebody has a pencil. I'm sure for a small fee they would be willing to be ready because I'm going to say go here soon. Don't be freaking out, okay? It's just the first day. Okay, ready, set, go. Ten minutes. Make sure you put your name on it. Enjoy it.
I'm going to turn my microphone back on. All right, let's take a look. Everybody got the first one right. All right. I'm going to leave this up here because I don't want to forget about this. All right, the next one. To take the derivative of sine of 5x cubed, you have to use which rule? Chain rule, right? And with that, you're going to need the power rule also. Right? So you don't have to, you, if you move the 15x squared out here, great. If you didn't, leave it there. I don't care. I mean, mathematically, it's all the same. Okay, that all right for number two? Chain rule. You take derivative of sine of something, it's cosine of that something. Then you take derivative of what's inside, which is here. Next one, what rule do you have to use? Product rule. This is multiplication. There's a product right there. You must use the product rule, which means you have to take derivative of this one, bam, times that one, bam, plus derivative of this one here times that one here. Now, can you have these flipped over? Yes. Can you have these flipped over? Yes. Can you switch the places? Yes. It all depends on how you learn the formula, because the formula is taught different ways. As long as you've got that expression in there, give yourself full credit. Next one. What do you need to do this one? This is a chain rule. This is mostly chain rule, right? You've got composition. You've got functions inside of functions, inside of functions, right? So you've got this lives in here, but all that lives in here. So you start on the outside. Derivative of sine is cosine, right? Cosine of all that. So cosine parentheses, all that. Close parentheses. Times. Now you've done the sine, so you have to take derivative of the cosine. Derivative of cosine of something is negative sine of it. So you need to make sure you uh, put this in parentheses and not leave it off or else it's going to look like subtraction. And then you've done the cosine, take derivative of what's inside, 15x squared. Can I move on? Whoa. Whoa, did I go too far? We're on five, right? Okay, this one is more chain, right? You have that little three above the sign right here, which means that it's really this sign of this stuff, all of that cubed, which means the cubed is the last thing happening, so it's the first thing that you're going to take the derivative of. So that 3 comes out like a power rule. And then it's all the sign of all this junk squared. So there it is. Then you move on. Times. You've done the cubed. Take, take derivative of sine. Derivative of sine of something is cosine of that. Then times again. Derivative of what's inside. Good? All right. Next one, y is e to the sine 5x. On this one, I just want to make sure everyone was comfortable with what the derivative of e, e to something is. And what is the derivative of e to something? 